Okay, so today we're diving into something pretty wild. Yeah. Quantum computing. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty uh pretty complex topic. Yeah, and we had a bunch of articles on this uh mm-hmm. this Google Willow chip. Is that what it's called? The Google Willow processor. The Willow processor. Okay. Yeah. And I gotta admit, I was a little intimidated when I first started reading this stuff. Like I need it's dense. Yeah, like a physics PhD to even understand yeah. what's going on. But Yeah, so the first thing to keep in mind is that uh, Willow itself is not a quantum computer. Okay. Um, it's a component of a quantum computer. Okay, so it's more like I saw one of the articles comparing it to like the engine of a car. Exactly. It's like a quantum processing unit or a QPU. No, that's that's not... what they're calling it. Okay, so not the whole car but the engine. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's the part that does the heavy lifting, the calculations. But what's so special about this engine? I mean, the articles mentioned some pretty wild stuff, like calculations that would take a supercomputer longer than the age of the universe. Right. So one of the things that's really remarkable about this particular chip is that it was able to perform a specific calculation in five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. That would take the world's most powerful supercomputer billions of years. Wow, that's just insane. That's the kind of speed up we're talking about here. Billions of years down to five minutes. I mean, that's just, that's hard to even comprehend. Yeah, it's mind boggling. So how how is that even possible? What makes this what makes this chip so different? So at the heart of quantum computing are these things called qubits. Qubits. Yeah. And qubits are the quantum version of bits, which are the fundamental units of information in classical computers. Okay, so like our laptops and phones, those all use bits. Exactly. Okay. And a bit can be either a zero or a one, like an on or off switch. Got it. But a qubit can be in a superposition of states. Okay, now you're losing me. So imagine Instead of just being on or off, it can be both on and off at the same time. Both at the same time. How is that possible? It's a quantum phenomenon. Okay, so it's like it's kind of like it's both zero and one at the same time. Exactly. It's like a dimmer switch that can be set to any level of brightness between fully on and fully off. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. Yeah. So these quibits are like super powered bits that can hold way more information. Exactly. And that's what allows quantum computers to perform these incredibly complex calculations much faster than classical computers. Okay. So it's not just about the speed. It's also about being able to handle these really complicated problems. Exactly. And not just handle them, but solve them in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I kept seeing in these articles was this emphasis on reducing errors. Yes. That's a big one. Because it seems like with all this complexity, there's a lot of room for things to go wrong. Absolutely. Quantum computers are incredibly sensitive to noise and errors. So, like, even the slightest interference could mess up the whole calculation. Exactly. And that's one of the major challenges in building practical quantum computers. So, how do they even begin to address that? Well, Willow has some new technology built in that dramatically reduces these errors. Really? It's a big step forward in making quantum computing more reliable. So it's not just about getting the answer faster. It's about getting the right answer consistently. Absolutely. Reliability is key. That makes sense. Now, another term I kept bumping into was tunable quibits. What does that even mean? So tunable qubits are qubits that can be precisely controlled. Okay. So you can adjust their properties to optimize them for specific calculations. So it's like fine-tuning an instrument to get the perfect sound. Exactly. By fine-tuning each qubit, scientists can improve both the speed and accuracy of the calculations. That's amazing. It's a huge advantage. So it sounds like Google is really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with Willow. But I'm curious, what does this all mean for us in the real world? I mean, what are the potential applications of this technology? Well, the potential applications are really vast and exciting. Imagine being able to design new drugs and materials at a molecular level. Oh, wow. Or model complex financial systems with incredible accuracy. So like predicting the stock market. Maybe one day, but more importantly, understanding and managing risk in a much more sophisticated way. Okay, that makes sense. What about things like energy and climate change? Could quantum computing help with those challenges? Absolutely. One of the most promising applications is in the field of energy. Quantum computers could help us develop much more efficient solar panels. Oh, wow. And batteries that could store energy for much longer periods of time. That would be a game changer, especially with the push for renewable energy. Exactly. And it could also revolutionize fields like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay, so we're talking about some pretty major breakthroughs here. Absolutely. And these are just a few examples. It sounds like we're on the verge of a technological revolution. In many ways, we are. 
But it's important to remember that we're still in the early stages of quantum computing. So it's not like we're going to have quantum computers in our homes anytime soon. Not quite, but the progress being made is incredible. Okay, so just to recap what we've learned today. Yeah. We've talked about Google's Willow processor, which is a powerful new component for quantum computers. Right. And we've delved into the world of Quibits, these mind-bending units of information that allow quantum computers to perform calculations at speeds that are just unimaginable with classical computers. And we've also touched on the challenges of error correction and the importance of tunable quibits for optimizing performance. Exactly. And we've explored just a glimpse of the potential applications of this technology, from revolutionizing medicine and energy to tackling global challenges like climate change. It's a field with incredible potential, and it's moving forward at an amazing pace. It's really exciting to think about what the future holds. Absolutely. And I think one of the most fascinating things about quantum computing is that we're really just scratching the surface. It's like we're explorers venturing into uncharted territory. Exactly. And who knows what incredible discoveries await us. It's definitely a journey worth following. Absolutely. So for all of you listening out there, think about this. If we could achieve the goal of a million quibit computer, what seemingly impossible problem would you want to see solved? It's a question that really makes you think about the limitless possibilities of this technology. And that's what makes it so captivating. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of quantum computing. It's been a pleasure. We'll be back next time with another fascinating...